This is Pastor Ken with you, and let me be the first to welcome you to 2018. Have a very happy new year. You want to tune in for my prophecy with Pastor Kent because I have a very special message for my flock that God has given me. And we will see where we go in 2018. <clears throat> We've been doing our Bible study on Genesis and we're looking at Genesis 25. Ephraim took another wife whose name was Kesha. She bore him Zimran, Yokshan, Maiden, Madian, Yishakab, and Shechab. Joseph fathered Sevra and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Ashram, Lustafan, and Lutamin. The sons of Midian are Elfram, Elfer, Hanukkah, Anna, Ella. Those were the descendants of K. Taratha. Aphram gave everything he owned to Zitika, but the sons of the combines he made grants while he was still living and sent them off to the east to the land of Kingdom away from Yishika his son this is how long Aphram lived was a hundred and seventy five years then Aphram breathed his last, dying at a ripe old age, an old man full of years, and was granted to his people, Yishika and Ishmael. His sons buried him in the cave of Melaphala, in the land of Ephron, the son of Toshakar in Hittim and Miriam, the field which Aphram purchased from his sons. Hit Aphram was buried there with Sarai, his wife. After Aphram died, God blessed Yishika, his son, and Yishika lived near Balafor Luxruai. Here is the genealogy of Ishmael's Ephraim's son, who Hagar, the Egyptian woman, bore to Ephraim. You have to remember when we go back that this was against God's laws that he take another wife because he told him that he would have a son. And he went and did his will and had Ishmael. There are names of the sons of Ishmael listed in order of their birth. The first of Ishmael was Notavat, followed by Kindar, Avila, Misham, Mishima, Doram, Misha As Misha Misha Asa Hada Tima Yutor Nefish and Kedamath. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names according to their settlements and camps. Twelve tribe rulers. This is how long Ishmael lived, 
was 137 years. Then he breathed his last, died, and was gathered to his people. Ishmael's sons lived between Hittalev and Surah near Egypt as you go toward Asha. He settled near his uh, near all his kinsmen. Here is the history of Yishikas, Ephraim's son. Ephraim fathered Yishikah. Yishikah was forty years old when he took Rivaka, the daughter of Baltuyo, and Ephraim, the son of Paden Aram, the sister of Levin, the Amory, to be his wife. Yishikah prayed to Adonai on behalf of his wife because he was childless. Adonai heeded his prayer and Rivka became pregnant. The children fought with each other inside her so much that she said, if it's going to be like this, why go on living? So she went and inquired to Adonai, who entered her. There are two nations in your womb. From birth, they will be two rivals. One of those people will be a stranger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time of her delivery came, there were twins in her womb. The first to come was reddish, covered all over with hair, like a coat. So they named him Yeshiva, completely formed, that is, having hair already. Then his brother emerged with his hand holding it of us heel. So she called Yeakov. He catches by the heel. She sublets. Yishika was 60 years old when she bore them. The boys grew, and Yesuf became skillful hunter and an outdoorsman. Well, Yekov was a quiet man who stayed in the tents. Yishika favored Yeva Yesava because he had the taste of game. Rivka favored Yadikov. So, as we see sibling rivalry happening before our eyes and a mother favors one while a father favors the other this is a warning for us that our son or daughter is not to be treated better than the other um, we are to love our children equally not one greater than the other and play one off against the other that is not godly at all so this is what happened because of that sin in this family one day when Yedekov had cooked some stew Yeshev came in from the open country exhausted and said to Yedekov please let me gulp down some of that red stuff that red stuff I'm exhausted this is why 
he called Yidam, red. Yaakov answered, first, sell me your first rights as firstborn. Look, I am about to die, so he's being overzealous. He's not about to die, you know, that's, he's exhausted, he's tired, he had a long day, but this is a figure of speech that was taken out of context. Said Yosef, what use to me is my rights as the firstborn? Yiddikov said, first swear to me. So he swore to him, thus telling his birthright to Yaakov. Then Yaakov gave him bread and lent till stew. He ate and drank and got up and went on his way. Thus Yeshev showed how little he valued his birthright. Now let's go back here for a second to what Adonai said. Back to 22. The children fought with each other inside her womb. Much that she said. If it's going to be like this, why go on living? So we have the first talk of suicide in the Bible. She wanted to commit suicide. She wanted to die. So she went to inquire to Adonai. But as we see, this is postpartum depression coming from being birth in birth or being pregnant it, it it's a common thing in women that they go through who and he answered her and said there are two nations in your womb from birth they will be two rival peoples in other words two rival nations one of these people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger so as we go down here and we see that Isaf said what use to me are my rights as firstborn so <clears throat> I was firstborn and I got my birthright stolen from me. You know, much like this. I, I, I feel very um, confused when I read this chapter because it happened to me and it wasn't my choice. You know, they went behind my back. They didn't come to my face and do this. You know, it was done connivingly and dirtily, you know. Have to remember that the firstborn, whether male or female, it doesn't matter. They are the firstborn and they have a right to their birthright. We have to give to our children equally, not one more than the other. We see all the time uh, fathers and mothers bickering back and forth between their children. This is what's happening in this chapter. That, you know, um, it's, it's messed up, you know. And uh, we as parents um, need to set the example. So. <coughs> we need to set it right and be godly parents when we put God first in our lives everything else is going to be gravy it's going to be blessing so we need to understand that you know and 
put our firstborn first. Not top, but first, because they are firstborn. Abba, thank you for being here with us. Bless, guide, strengthen, and keep us as we go our separate ways throughout this day. Bless and keep us in thy way and in thy will. We say these things in Yeshua's name. Amen.